Today we're going to negatively stain a grid that has a sample of phage on it. So I get my phage, I have 10 microliters in a pipette. I draw it up and I'm going to put it on this grid. The grid is the little copper one, not the big black one. And I found that if you make a droplet and then just touch it to the grid, it's an easy transfer. And there it is. Now I dispose of the tip. And it's going to sit for three minutes. During these three minutes, what we're going to do is we're going to label this box that we're going to um, store the grid in. And what you're going to do is you're going to put your name and your section number. Now this is incubating for three minutes and so we're also going to get a pipette, a new tip. We're going to get 10 microliters of water. We're going to get 10 microliters of the uryl acetate stain, which we'll find under this foil in a glass container. And now we're ready. So the most important thing of negative staining is not letting your grid dry out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this triangle of Wattman paper and my water for the wash. And I'm going to just take the tip of the Wattman paper and touch it to the corner of my grid and the water will wick away and I immediately add 10 microliters of the wash. Dispose of the tip. I'm going to get my uryl acetate. I'm going to spin my Wattman paper to another corner. I'm going to touch the grid, remove the wash water, and put the uryl acetate on. Dispose of the tip. We're going to let it sit for two minutes and then we will wick off the uryl acetate, dispose of the Wattman paper, and we're done. So the next thing we're going to do is to gently pick up the grid by the corner, by an edge, and place it onto the Wattman paper. And sometimes if you get something sticking like this, you can get one of those wicking papers and help it off. Cover it. There will be two grids to a box because you and your partner are going to share a box. And that is negative staining.